Hey garden friends, welcome back to Not Quite Homesteading ESK Garden. Thank you for joining me in today's video. If you are new here, welcome. If you're a gardening enthusiast, if you're someone that is a new gardener like me, just looking for community support, or if you just love to follow a good gardening journey, definitely join our family, hit that subscribe button, let's engage and have some fun in the comments. So today I'm going to be talking to you guys simply about my 2023 grow bag plan as well as sharing some additional seeds that i picked up and got in stock since my last seed hole recording so i'll start with the seeds and i'll talk to you guys a little bit about what i'm going to be growing i'm not going to do my raised bed plan today because while i do have some of it down i don't know that i have it 100 percent accurate and you know truthfully will it be 100 accurate i don't know probably not but as of right now because i have more plans to lay more beds and um because i still have things that are growing and are probably going to be growing through you know a couple of months into the planting or the spring planting season i'm going to have to rethink that plan just a little bit so i'm not including that today but when i do have it a little bit more solid i will share that with you guys but we're going to talk about strictly my grow bag plans because i do have those laid out pretty well i am super excited and planting for me is beginning in february that is both direct sowing and seeding now i did i think seed some of my peppers a little late but i do have more seeds coming in i have some that i got in this little batch that i'm going to share with you guys today and um some that i'm still kind of waiting on that i am going to have to start I'm not as concerned about it because from what I have been uh, kind of like studying as far as like my zone goes and you know where I am, I actually have two pepper planting seasons, which I think is pretty rare. So I am excited about that. So anything that I don't get a, I guess, jump start on will still have adequate timing, even if it, you know, comes up later, much later in the summer or early fall to be able to provide the harvest that I'm looking for. So talking quickly about some of the seeds I picked up, I have the order that I placed. I want to say I placed this order maybe not even a full week ago from Johnny's. And when I say they are on their game, they're on their game. I ordered these seeds the next day they were shipped. I had them Tuesday, two days later. So if that's not service for you, I don't know. I'm, I'm pretty sure they have to be setting the standard. But um, I'm waiting on some seeds from Eden Brothers that I placed the same day as this. I think they just shipped yesterday. So they should be here like in a few days. But when I get those, I will share those as well. I picked up some King Arthur hybrid bell peppers. Now the King Arthur particularly, I wanted this variety because it's supposed to be summer bacteria, summer bacteria and wilt resistant. Um, and what that means is like, I guess it's supposed to stand up better to climates like mine where it's extremely hot and humid uh, during our summer months. And I say extremely hot, like we're not like desert hot, right? But, you know, we're consistently, I would say, in the summer months around, like, somewhere around, like, the mid to high 80s. But our humidity, it is so humid here that sometimes it makes the real field temperature, you know, feel like about 95 degrees on a regular basis. So, um, I picked these up. I wanted to see how these do in comparison to the California Wonder peppers that I picked up as well. I picked up some lemongrass seeds. So this was one of the things that I really, really wanted to grow this year and definitely was one of the things that was a trigger for, you know, placing like these additional seed orders. Um, lemongrass is something that you just don't find in a lot of places as far as grocery goes. And when you do find it, it's really expensive. So I'll be happy to grow my own. Um, I love Thai food. I love, you know, Southeast Asian food. And I'm certain there are plenty of Americanized recipes that I can throw that in. Um, it's just a delicious, like deliciously fragrant herb. And um, I'm really excited to grow it. I picked up the Nigro, I guess that's how you say that, Nigro Italian eggplant. And I had mentioned this in, I think, 
my seed starting video where I was talking about this compared to the Black Beauty. I ended up getting both of them, forgetting that I picked up the Black Beauty at like my local big box store. But I am gonna plant both. It'll be nice to side by side compare. That way I can determine, you know, if I like them, which one I like better. And then that'll be the one I'll probably stick to growing, you know, going forward. Um, I don't think I'll be eating so much eggplant that I need to grow both, but you know, it never hurts to try uh, a side by side. I have some Brilliant Hybrid Specialty Melons. Now, the Brilliant Melon is a um, canary melon and it is likened to a honeydew, but being like much sweeter. And um, I'm really interested, like I love melons. I love honeydew melon. Honeydew melon is so good. I do not like cantaloupe, but you know, I don't know how that works. I mean, to me, they taste completely different. So <laughs> I'm really excited to grow this. Um, I don't know how much of this I am going to grow, but I do really want a significant melon harvest because I really enjoy summer melons. Um, quite honestly, I could probably sit down and eat a whole one by myself each time I eat them. That's how good they are. I picked up some shallots. So these are the conserver hybrids. Um, I wanted shallots really, really badly as well, and I did forget to order them the first time I placed like the few seed orders that I placed back in the fall, and I'm happy to have these. Now, the one thing I did read is that like when you start them in the spring, they don't get as big as they would if you start them in the fall. I don't know if that holds completely true to my climate, but I'm still gonna grow some during the spring, but I am gonna save some of these for the fall, just to compare the difference in the length of growing to see what makes more sense for me. I picked up some Shishido sweet peppers. Now, I picked these up because apparently these peppers are like all the rave across the gardening community. Um, and everybody talks about how good they are, you know, how wonderful a snack or side they make. And I'm really looking for ways to just kind of mix up like the vegetable sides. You know, I think we tend to think about things as like, such as like broccoli or cauliflower or green beans, you know, as the typical sides. And we don't think about really having like onions or sweet peppers as a side. And those things actually do make really good sides as well. And it gives you an opportunity to mix up like, you know, the veggies that you're taking in so that you get a good, well-rounded balance, but also just so that you don't get bored. And I was like, I have to try them, you know, why not? Because that seems to be the pepper that everybody is like, if you buy nothing else, you might as well get that one. I picked up some strawberry seeds. These are the Alexandria. These are an Alpine strawberry. I wanted, they had another one that I wanted, but it was sold out by the time I actually got around to buying them. Now, I'm a little sad about this only because when you're starting strawberries from seeds, you will not get a fruit the first spring. Now, it's possible that I might get one in the fall, but essentially they tell you your first year, don't expect any fruiting. So for me, like if I plant these, these this season, my expectation is that I'll be getting a harvest in spring of 2024 if i get lucky i'll get some in the fall um i'm gonna have to like i've been doing some research around it but i'm gonna have to go back at the time of planting just to make sure i'm doing the right things my understanding is that you want to like you know trim off any early blooms the same that you do with some other plants so that you can um get the right amount of I guess leaves to get the right amount of photosynthesis going in order to support the plant when it begins to fruit. So we shall see. What I think I may do this year is go to a uh, Pick strawberry farm and pick up some strawberries in bulk because I won't have my own to grow. And I don't necessarily want to um, go through the trouble of getting the bare root strawberries at this point like i think i just have way too much on my plate for someone that's doing a first time spring garden and i just want to cut out the extra steps <laughs> if i'm being honest so you know we got enough to worry about with our peppers i have a poncho tomatillo variety 
and this is apparently a new variety that they released i don't remember what the distinction was between this like what makes it new i imagine there are some improvements on you know some of the um disease resistance and such but i got these as well as the toma verde tomatillos and if you're new to grow grown tomatillos i am as well but um you have to have two varieties in order for the, the fruit to pollinate well. So I'm looking forward to growing those. And then the last one I got from Johnny's is the Torpedo Melon. This is an Asian variety melon. It is an early melon, which I, I didn't remember that, I guess, at the time I ordered it. Like when I had done the research, I wrote down everything that I wanted. Um, I didn't write down all the reasons why, but I'm pretty certain that was one of the reasons why I wanted this. Um, this is also likened to honeydew, but it says it has a mild, like extremely sweet, but slightly, I think, floral kind of flavor. And um, it's... You know, they're, I think, single melons, if I'm not mistaken. They said they grow small and they grow, like, singularly, so you can, like, eat a whole one. They're meant to be personal. Um, really excited that this is a 65-day harvest melon. I think most of them somewhere are around somewhere like 80, 90, or 100 days, right? So to be able to get some early fruit, oh, I'm so excited about this. Um, but that's all the seeds that I got for Johnny's for this round. I want to say the second round, but it's not the second round. <laughs> so for this round, that's what I got. I am going to work on getting some of these planted um, or started rather today because like I said, we're already in February. Um, this is, I'm pretty sure like the last weekend we're getting like a significant frost of any kind. And I want to make sure that, you know, by March 1st, I'm able to start moving some of these things out because at that point, like we're pretty much going to be having spring weather for sure. So let's talk about the grow bag plan for a little bit. So right now, I am currently working with 12 10 gallon grow bags. I recently purchased 12 20 gallon grow bags and I'm going to start with those first because I haven't planted anything in them and it was a little bit, it was a little bit easier. I'm not going to say it was a lot easier, but it was a little bit easier to come up with a plan for these because I'm starting fresh. I'm starting with fresh soil. So the things that are going into these, I don't have to worry about, you know, well, what was planted before? Is it going to be done? You know, and then what is the plan for these like post growth, right? What do I have in there as far as like companion planting? And then, you know, what can I put in there that's also compatible with the companion plants? I didn't have to do any of that stuff. So I kind of just wrote out the things that I want to grow in these bags. And I probably will in end up investing in one more set of like the 20 gallon grow bags because as I move into, I would say probably like March and April, you know, there are going to be some other things that, you know, come up that will need planting that such as like sweet potatoes, right? That I do not um, want to grow in my raised beds because I don't want them kind of like taking over or, you know, always having potatoes just kind of blooming up in the bed and interfering with other crops that I'm planting. So I probably will end up purchasing more of those but that'll be a little bit down the line so in my 20 gallon grow bags i have 12 of them i'm going to be using four for potatoes i plan to grow russet potatoes yukon potatoes a red potato variety which one i don't know yet and then japanese yams if you have not ever had japanese yams now i love our sweet potatoes <laughs> of regular American sweet potatoes, but Japanese yams, somebody has the, the secret on that one. So <laughs> those yams are so good. Literally, you don't need to add anything to them. That's how good the flavor is on Japanese yams. You can boil them, you can roast them, whatever. Don't add anything. Enjoy the natural flavor. They are so sweet, they're so nutty, and it's just like, how? How did you get all of this into this one potato? <laughs> so um, I definitely want to grow those. And I've decided because those 
those seeds are really, really expensive. Um, I think what I'm going to do is purchase a bag of organic uh, Japanese yams and then try to grow them that way. I plan on planting um, another bag of carrots. So I currently have two bags going, but I want to grow um, the Imperator and I want to get those started. So those are something that are supposed that is something that's supposed to be direct sold for me now at the beginning of February. And I'm also going to be growing rutabagas. Now I don't have my rutabaga seeds yet, but as soon as I get those, I'm literally going to drop them in and that'll be taken care of. So that is six bags that is going to um, kind of like root crops over here. And then my other six, I'm going to be growing leeks in one. Um, I'm gonna be growing my Taderna leeks. I do have my King Richard leeks planted in one of my 10 gallon bags. And, you know, I probably would be better off having them opposite. But, you know, at the time I had the uh, King Richard leeks ready. So, and I wanted to plant some and I planted them out of season, of course, true ebony fashion. And I, I put them in the grow bag. So they're growing fine now as we're like, you know, etching toward the warmer weather. And I want to have, make sure I have plenty of them. I do enjoy leeks. Of course, potato leek soup is a classic, but I want to be able to utilize them more in just regular cooking. I have three bags that I'm dedicating to squash plants. Now, I plan to do my vining squashes in the grow bags. And part of that is because um, I'm just not going to have the amount of beds that I need in order to be able to put everything in beds at the point that all of these things need to go in. I will be continuing to build out the beds um, until you know we're done with the amount that I intend to plant through the end of the year. So yes, the garden will be steadily growing throughout 2023, but you know we have a timeline in which we have to get these in and the best way I can do that without interfering with the things I have in now in order to not miss the dates is to go ahead and use the grow bag. So one of the bags is going to be dedicated to growing delicata and spaghetti squashes together. One bag is going to be dedicated to growing butternut squash and I'm actually going to start two plants for that and then one is going to be dedicated to growing acorn and kabucha squash so that is what I am doing for that now I do plan on growing um zucchini I'm probably going to end up growing zucchinis in the beds I don't know if I will regret that but that's just kind of what it is for right now. <laughs> um, and then the last two 20 gallon bags are going to go to tomatoes. I decided that I'm going to grow indeterminate tomatoes and I actually probably will end up pairing this with peppers. Um, more than likely spicy peppers. I'm thinking that, you know, even though they say don't plant, you know, peppers and tomatoes together because they have the same pests, I'm thinking that in addition to whatever other, um, like herbs and kind of like plants that I can, you know, plant to be bring in like beneficial insects, I'm thinking that the spicy peppers should act as a deterrent as well for the tomato hornworm and other pests. So I'm hoping I'm gonna try that method uh, this spring. I'm hoping it works out for me. And I'm still kind of working with limited space. So I'm really going to have to kind of take a chance on some things and I'm okay with that because, you know, at the end of the day, you really don't know unless you try. So that is the 20 gallon grow bag plan. Um, I will just like put a snapshot of this up on the screen as well so you guys can kind of see how I wrote this out. Um, I kept it pretty simple. It's almost kind of like um, a tree in a sense with or like kind of like an hierarchy chart. I don't know how you describe it but basically I have it kind of written where it's like I have the main thing that's going in and then I have a branch off um, like a tree branch off 
to what is going to be planted next. I haven't started the follow up plan for the 20 gallon grow bags and I probably won't do this until like mid spring because once those things go in, they're going to take a little bit of time. The 10 gallon grow bag plan, um, I have 12 10 gallon grow bags and they're actively being used with the exception of one. And in the first one, I have Nantes carrots. Now, I think I started those carrots maybe sometime in November. So they should be, you know, ready, I would say maybe in like another month or so. And it took longer than expected, obviously, because we had some really, really cold weather that kind of slowed down the growth a bit. I also am trying out um, a different method where it was like somebody, I think someone said like, don't worry about adding like manure. Now they didn't say don't add fertilizer, <laughs> but they said don't add manure to the carrots because sometimes it can mess up like the carrot shaping. I ended up not really adding like fertilizer so that I could see what the carrots would do on their own in the earlier stage. But what I realized is that um, I think they still need fertilizer, right? And I ended up, not fertilizing probably until maybe mid-December. So I did a fertilization sometime around mid-December and then I've been fertilizing probably every like two to three weeks. The first time I did it, um, I did it with nitrogen because the leaves were barely growing. I started to see an uptick in the plant. The last two times I did a balanced nitrogen, uh, phosphorus, potassium combination, but at a high level and the plants are really starting to kind of move. So what did I learn with that is <laughs> while they might not need manure fertilizer, they definitely need fertilizer. And then from the Nantes carrots, which I'm, like I said, I'm expecting to, expecting them to be done probably in about maybe a month, a month and a half. I should be at that point ready to transplant my eggplants. So I'm going to be transferring the Negril, Nigril eggplants and my white eggplant into that grow bag along with some nasturtiums and thyme. I have a bag that has parsnips in it now. Now I'm not expecting those parsnips to be done anytime soon. So I don't have a succession plan for that bag. I'm expecting those parsnips quite honestly to be there probably close to um, the fall. And they take a really long time to grow in general. The good thing about the fact that I, I planted them out of season, I guess you could say, is they did get a frost, right? They're experiencing a frost. And my understanding with parsnips is that they really come, their flavor really comes to life once they experience a frost. So I think you are supposed to plant them in the spring, but when you do plant them in the spring, they don't come up for harvest until, if I'm not mistaken, somewhere like close to Thanksgiving. So, that is a long growing season so therefore those are something that i probably will always grow in bags because you know they're for one they don't necessarily need to be in a bed but i don't know that i would want to give up a, a uh, raised bed space for something like parsnips right in my third bag i have lettuce and spinach growing right now so i do have a uh mini romaine variety it's a red lettuce variety as well as um the some hybrid spinach and i will be transferring my early girl tomatoes into that bag so whether or not those plants are actually finished i still will be able to transplant the tomato plant into that bag and that was the reason that you know i decided to put the tomato there that way if those are not ready or i can you know do the cut and come again method those things will still be able to grow around the tomato without one affecting the other in my green in my fourth bag i have bunching onions right now and what i'm expecting to do is the ones that have been there um, that are kind of taking up the center space, I'm probably going to end up pulling those. I've planted around the perimeter. Um, I did do like a second 
like another seed drop i want to say maybe early december and those are starting to come up so in march i'm going to direct sow some cucumber in that particular bag i'm going to drop a dill seed there this month so that the dill can be up and you know blooming by the time the cucumber uh begins to like get big and those three should work well in tandem in terms of keeping um, pests at bay on the cucumber plant. I have a bag that I'm currently growing several snow peas in. And what I'm going to add to that bag is my lemongrass and calendula. Those two things I think will do well. Um, lemongrass does get really big. So I'm thinking that by the time the snow pea season is over, the lemongrass will have the room it needs to be able to spread out in that bag. And then it'll pretty much be like half lemongrass, half calendula. My King Richard leeks are in the sixth bag. And then I don't know what to expect as far as when those will be ready because I planted those out of season. I'm going to go back and look at the seed pack as far as like the timing once you know they're in the right season. But what I am thinking is I'm going to transplant one of my pepper plants to that bag as well. Now, I don't think that me transplanting the pepper bag will impact the leeks too much because, you know, the pepper root is going to be, you know, pretty like slim compared to the rest of the leek situation. But because they are King Richard leeks and I do want them to grow to a big size, um, I just want to make sure I'm not, you know, planting a bunch of stuff around them. Now the red beets, I'm pretty certain those should be done sometime in the next month. I'm going to be transferring a Roma tomato, which is a determinate variety, into that particular bag, as well as some basil, nasturtium, and calendula. And I'm hoping that those things will pair well, again, with the tomato to keep the pest activity at bay. I know that like yes I've had my experience already with the tomato hornworm but one of the things that I recognize here that messes with my tomato plants are leaf cutters and I'm like I don't know if that's their like plant of choice or if it was just that you know the plants that were of all the plants that were available the plants they prefer were not available but i definitely had some issues with them um, eating my tomato leaves throughout the fall i have a bag that i have purple carrots in right now i'm actually going to be adding lavender to that bag i don't know if those carrots will be ready in time enough for the things that i have to transplant in the next month or two but I haven't made any other plans to plant anything there just yet. But if they are, it may give me an opportunity to put up another uh, spot for tomatoes. In the next bag, I have radishes and beets. Um, I'm growing some Crimson Giant radishes as well as some golden beets, which I don't have a ton of the golden, golden beets going, but I do think those, the ones that I do have there now, should be done sometime in the next month and a half, um, maybe two months. I'm still going to plant or transplant um, another Roma tomato into that bag. I'm going to add oregano, marigold, and hot peppers to it as well. And I should have enough spacing by the time it's time for those things to go in, particularly the tomatoes and the peppers. Um, the radishes should be like pretty much done. So I can create the space that I need to be able to transplant those in. And then if there is like room enough, I may go ahead and just drop some more radish seeds around those. My next bag has rosemary in it. Um, I grew the rosemary with bush beans last. So I do need to pull up the bush beans and then what I'm actually going to put down with the rosemary are turnips and marjoram. And the reason I'm doing both, um, even though it's not like a huge space, is because I am going to plant the plant turnips somewhere else as well. But, you know, it is something for me to get going and I don't really know how I'm going to like turnips, so I'm not going to plant a ton of them at one time. So I figured it would be nice to start a little bit in the grow bag 
and then I can do the succe succession so in one of the beds as those spaces clear out. Now I have a bag that I started some borage in. Outside of the borage, um, there is nothing else in the bag right now. So what I'm going to add to that bag is some tarragon. And then when the eggplants are up and ready to transplant, I'll be adding my um, Turkish orange eggplant and then the green knight eggplant. And then my last 10 gallon bag, I have parsley and snow peas in there currently. I don't have a plan for that bag right now because I don't know how long the snow peas are going to take and I don't intend to uproot this parsley. So I don't know as of right now what I could potentially plant there because I don't know how long the snow peas are going to produce and you know how long they're going to run into the season so that is my current grow bag plan adding you know 12 more grow bags may be a necessity for me i haven't done it yet and then i haven't created a plan for it but i think i have a pretty extensive and solid plan for the bags that we do have like I said, I will bring you guys the raised bed plan in another video as soon as I have that figured out. But let me know what you guys are doing with your plans. Do you have them down? Are you just kind of going fly by the wind? Or you know, are you someone like me that like you need to have something on paper in order to make it make sense for you? I appreciate you guys for taking the time out to spend with me today, hearing the garden plan, checking out what new seeds we have here. And I am so excited about this season. I hope that you guys are too. Until our next update, thanks for watching friends. Bye.